often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Summer skies and howling tempests oft succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Singing by and by. And welcome to worship with New Life Metropolitan Community Church. No matter who you are or how you self-identify, we believe that God's love is for all people. So make yourself at home whether you're here on site, joining us for the first time, or if you're joining us by live stream today or later in the week. Gracious and merciful God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of love and of life and of being able to share it together. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. For our gathering call today, I invite you to join in the bold. Arnold is going to come and lead us in Spanish. The Lord's anger is but for a moment. Su favor es para toda la vida. Weeping may last for the night. But a shout of joy comes in the morning. Pero un grito de alegría llega por la mañana. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures as we sing together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Holy, 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 holy. 
Again, welcome to this space and place. It's good to be here. It was nice to hear the rain and feel the rain last night. And again, if you're joining us for worship for the first time, please make yourself at home. Um, I want to welcome a, not a visitor and not a guest, but yesterday I stopped by to see uh, Odessa and Carolyn. And Odessa said, I really want to come to church. But you know, with all of her health challenges, she needs to be away from us. If you'll look back into my office, you'll see Odessa back there. And so please, please just wave, go by and wave and speak at the end of the service today if you'd like to. But it's good to have Odessa with us today. And we continue to lift up Carolyn and Odessa and others. And we'll spend some more time praying this morning. Another person that's back off of, from being gone who's trying to give Tracy a, a run for her stand-up comedy money is Jennifer to do announcements for us today. <laughs> Hey, you may be seated. Um, I really missed y'all. Yeah, I got to tell you, um, Christina did uh, attendance while I was gone. And I was sitting at the breakfast table and I got this text because we text the group. And she's like, attendance was blah, 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 blah. And it was 930 in the morning. And I'm thinking, well, how does she know who's going to be there today? It's only 930. <laughs> I completely forgot about the time difference. Yeah. <laughs> So I am glad to be back with y'all. Welcome to everybody here and welcome to all of y'all at home. And if you're at home, you still have time to get to us for lunch. Right. So lunch is going to be at the Nasty Buffalo. Is that what you said, Rick? Dirty. No, the Dirty <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> I like their shirts. I got a shirt that says, I heart dirty chicks. Oh. Yeah. I I may or may, may not be talking about Megan. I'm not telling. <laughs> so lunch is at the Dirty Buffalo today. Um, also, this week, <laughs> we have free soap making <laughs> workshop. <laughs> and actually, actually, that's been changed. This is put on, remember, by the 50-plus driving group. And it's not soap making this week, talking about being dirty and nasty. It's, it's making terrariums. So uh, there's a, a place uh, by Sid Neighbors is who you need to respond to if you want to come. And it's welcome to anybody who would like to do that. Go ahead. So in the What's Happening, it says we're making soap. Again, whoever's putting together the uh, What's Happening they're just not in the right frame of mind. We're making terrariums. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> you know I'm the person putting it together. <laughs> All right, there is a slideshow going on. It says drag bingo. That is going, oh my gosh. It says it's on the 28th, but it's actually on the 29th. It's on Friday. That's a number. Look at the top, the, 29. The, 28, the 28th drag king, queen and king bingo is the 28th one we've done. I can't read the slides. <laughs> I have issues. So we've done really well <laughs> just to make you aware. I think we've got, as of this morning, there are about 10 tickets left. Uh, so if you have not, um, please, if you're buying tickets today, put your money in an envelope and write on it, uh, bingo tickets, uh, if you need to, or go online and do that today because they've got a feeling in the next 24 hours, uh, hopefully we'll be at capacity doing that. And that's really a great thing. And before we leave today, as we get ready for next week, um, if you, we could use some help uh, because, you know, this place gets transformed uh, pretty quick. This week in this space becomes our bingo space. And then we have to do a quick turnaround after Saturday night to get it back ready for Sunday morning. Uh, Christina and Roger are coordinating volunteers, so helping set up and also to tear down and all that kind of stuff. Raise your hand, Roger, so people uh, can see you. If you'll see Roger, if you can help with any of that. And after worship today, before we go to the Dirty Nasty Buffalo and have to all be washed up, uh, if you could help us move these chairs, and we'll give some instructions about how to do that. These all need to be moved out, the other chairs moved in, and get tables. That would be great. Uh, can I see some raising a hand? Everybody, raise your hand and say, praise you, Jesus. Praise Thank you for volunteering to help do that today. Back to you, Jen. All right, so, um, we do have our monthly grief support group meeting in a couple of weeks. That's going to be May 2nd, and that is here at the building. 
of course, we all experience grief in different ways and we grieve different things. Um, I may be grieving my mind right now, the loss of it. I'm trying to get back in the swing of things, but there are very serious things that we also grieve. So everyone is welcome to come in. Everything we do say and share is kept confidential. Then uh, Wednesday, in a couple of weeks, we have our Pride Fest planning. So, you know, we have a good time at Pride Fest in Norfolk. If you want to be part of the planning and behind the scenes, come out, share your wonderful ideas and your creative suggestions. Okay. Then uh, Charles has a weekend of fun planning. Charles, you want to raise your hand? The Lake Sharonda weekend. That's some hiking and camping in the Virginia Blue Ridge. Now, it's beautiful up there. And I've heard that it is a real good time. Not real good, but real good time. So see Charles for that information. We are also, as a board and part of our strategic plan that was approved in February, we are putting together some teams and we are looking for volunteers. Our current lookout is for a generosity team leader a hospitality coordinator or team leader, worship team volunteer coordinator, and worship parking team me members. If you have any questions or want some more information about any of those things, please see Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jen. It was good to have you back. Thank you. Have I'm up. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting. I'm, I'm taking about three or four pages out of the sermon since we've uh, gone a little over in announcements today. <laughs> Aren't you glad that we serve and are created by a God who is with us that's not a stick-in-the-mud God? Can I hear an amen to that? To be able to experience joy and togetherness in a world that sometimes feels like it's out of control and scary as all get out. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we go through the worship today. But to know that God's Spirit finds us in a week like we've heard on the news and a week like maybe you've had from praises to all kinds of emotional trauma that we may have experienced or, or put ourselves through even. And so we claim this space again. And yesterday was Earth Day. And uh, it's important for us to remember that we are not only, that word steward, I think we underst don't understand fully to be good stewards of the earth. Uh, but I like to think of that we are called to be partners with God in, in all of creation. And you've probably heard the, the argument that some people like to make. Oh, well, it's not the cars that are causing all this, it's the cows. Well, think about what cows emit. I'm not talking about the milk and the meat and all that, but they emit what? Methane. Methane. Cars emit what? CO2, carbon dioxide, right. And so it's not one or the other. It's sort of a multifaceted thing, and that reminds us. And in fact, I think the more methane is produced by the cows, than, but it's, our, our meat consumption is scheduled by 2050 to increase by 70%. Uh, but it's not just one or the other. But I do think back to remember when we had the lockdown and the pandemic and we all stopped driving. I don't know about you, but that spring, the air smelled fresher. Maybe the cows didn't eat as much. I don't know. <laughs> whatever it was, the flowers looked prettier. The water seemed clearer. And whatever it is, whether it's one or the other or both or all of that, we have responsibility. And today I have included in our worship guide uh, our... MCC statement of faith as a way of acknowledging not only our faith, but acknowledging uh, our role as stewards, our partners with God in all of creation. And I'll invite you in a moment to read the bold with me. This statement says, Come, taste and see Jesus Christ. You invite all people to your open table. You make us, your people, a beloved community. You restore the joy of our relationship with God even in the midst of loneliness, despair, and degradation. We are each unique and we are all belong a priesthood of believers, baptized and filled with your Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your healing presence in a hurting world. Would you read with me? 
We expect to see your reign on earth as it is in heaven as we work toward a world where everyone has enough, wars cease, and all creation lives in harmony. We affirm your charge to all of humanity to care for the land, sea, and air. Therefore, we will actively resist systems and structures which are destroying your creation. With all of creation, we worship you, every tribe, every language, every people, every nation. We know you by many names, triune God, beyond comprehension, reveal to us in Jesus Christ, who invites us to the feast. Amen. Would you rise as we are able as we sing together? Ain't got time to die. Lord, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. But when I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Don't let all of my time to praise my Jesus. All of my time to praise my Lord. I don't praise him, the rock's gonna cry out. Glory and honor, glory and honor, ain't got time to die. Lord, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Many times you've heard me say when I was growing up in the mountains of North Carolina, the choir director would come up after Sunday school and say, everybody who will, come on to the choir. And half the church would get up and go to the choir, and they couldn't hold a note and didn't know anything, but they had fun singing. So let's try this again. Scott, in the bold piece, let's sing out. What, what are those pieces there? Praise in my Jesus. Say it with me. Praise in my Jesus. And you see the bowl, sing out, and let's be a good old choir today. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. All right, let's take it away, Scott. Lord, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Cause when I'm helping the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. Helping the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. When I'm helping the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Cause it takes all of my time. Praise my Jesus. All of my time. Praise my Lord. I don't praise him, the rock's gonna cry out. Glory and honor, glory and honor. Ain't got time to die. Lord, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Would you remain as you are as Jeff comes to read our scripture from the Gospel of Luke? Words of Scripture today come from Luke 24, 13 through 36. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleophas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more... It is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, 
Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So we went in to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. You may be seated as God blesses this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures. In our prayer time today, let us continue to lift up everything that we're holding inside of us, our concerns, our praises, and knowing that, you know, prayer is something that God's Spirit finds us in. It is relationship with God and it is relationship with each other. And so we claim God's promise and presence not only for ourselves, but for those who are walking journey, finding the journey tough right now, whether it's about health issues or work issues or all kinds of things that we may be juggling at any single time. Again, Odessa and Carolyn, we continue to hold you all near and dear in our heart. Let's remember Reverend Jim this morning too, who's facing some health challenges himself and no doubt some others. And thank you for just being who you are as we hold each other as God holds us. Many, will you give word to our prayers today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our divine creator, God of many names, you are all wise, all knowing, always among us, all loving. We come to you this morning in praise, prayer, petition with thanksgiving. We are being spiritually, emotionally, physically challenged not just here in Portsmouth or Norfolk, but globally. The core of our essential being is being tampered with. At times we have become exhausted and fearful, even depressed. Help us to stay strong and focused. Help us to continue to be compassionate to others as we are commanded to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, Caution all of us that we be careful to love ourselves because if we don't, our neighbor is in trouble. Let us continue to fight evil and hate and injustice. And help us, O oh God, our divine creator, help us to embrace love, truth, social justice, 
We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, your miracles, and your patience with us who are arrogant and stubborn sometimes. In Jesus' name, I offer this. Amen, amen, amen again. Amen. amen. <laughs> The joy of being able to serve as a pastor in Metropolitan Community Churches has a lot of different facets to it. It's not just standing here with you on Sunday morning, which this is a wonderful place to be and share together, but it's to walk the journey with you throughout the week and to be there at special times. And one of the things, you know, growing up Hellfire and Brimstone Baptist, I was never that, but I grew up in that environment that we're able to share our times of blessings. Uh, and before we could get married in our community, we blessed holy unions. And uh, there have been times that we do pet blessings around here. And we do name blessings for anyone who in our transgender or gender non-binary or gender queer community. Um, because lots of times, uh, and I have someone come to me a some time back, some years ago, that said to me, you know, I was baptized with this name, but that's not who I am. And I thought, who am I to stand in the way of us living into how God has created us inside and out? We even do pet blessings around here come the fall. Sometimes they're exorcisms. <laughs> we also yesterday had the opportunity to be at Joey and Linda and Tony's house, and Linda and Tony are Joey's parents, if you didn't know, for a house blessing. And... Uh, Tony has gotten comfortable with us and sort of uh, picks at me a little bit. And afterwards, I'm sitting out by the grill. He's still grilling hamburgers. And uh, one of the things that... Um, we're getting music from somewhere. It's not, it's not the Academy Awards, so it's not telling me to shut up. Uh, so anyway, I... <laughs> Try that on April Fool's and see how long of a sermon you get. <laughs> so I'm sitting after the blessing. Is that on that speaker, Rich? If it is, go ahead and just turn it off. Is it the house? Okay. That's all right. We'll just let it be the nice background and see what happens. It's not a funeral home either, so don't act dead in this. <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there after the house blessing by the grill. Tony is grilling hamburgers, and he said, Now, Mark, you might want to move. I don't want to send your toupee. So I said back to him later, I said, you know, I said, and it started to rain. And he said, oh, a little rain never hurt anybody. I said, unless it makes him point to him, unless it makes your hair dye run. <laughs> so I say all that to say this, that sometimes that old cliche saying is sometimes we give as good as we get. Now, I say all that to say this, it's offering time. And so let us give 
as well as we receive. Can I hear an amen to that? Thank you for who you are with your compassion, with your spirit of God and Jesus that lives in you and gets reflected to so many people in your presence and in how you give, not only financially, but other ways as well. And you can get up at any time and put something in the offering plate or go to newlifemcc.net and go to our giving page and give that way. Uh, or you can put something in the mailbox to us, uh, whichever way is comfortable for you. But thank you for who you are and how you give of yourselves. Let us give as well as receive. and join us in singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Creator, Son, Gracious God, we do indeed offer our thanks today for these gifts. Please, God, allow us to use these gifts to give you glory in all that we do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you to our worship team and everything that happens behind the scenes and in front of you on Sunday morning for all the extra effort that everyone puts in. And thank you for all of you who are going to volunteer to help transform this place, uh, for Bingo coming up and for all the things. Uh, and we will be having um, security, uh, just in case you were wondering, uh, at that event. If anybody would left, like to help offset with the cost of that, please let us know. Uh, because we are, you know, of course, going to pay for that. But it's important for us to do our due diligence, giving everything that's going on nationally uh, and, and targeted toward our community. Uh, and thank you for those of you who've been bringing in prizes. Uh, if, you, if you've got uh, prizes that you're still planning to bring in for to offer, let me know so we know what we're working with because we're putting those prize packages together. Uh, it's shaping up to be, I think, a, a good 20, bingo 28th. Wow. Even on the, is that? The 20, not the 29th, it's the 28th, yeah. Okay. All right, let's get down to business so I don't blame Jen for us being here for two hours this afternoon. <coughs> Does anybody remember back in the early 80s a TV commercial for the clapper? Yes. What was the clapper? Yes. Turns things on and off. Would it be that easy? <laughs> this is the bad side I can already tell over here today. I better just move over here to this side a little bit. Any of you who would like to move over to the good side, please feel free to do that. 
Well, do you know what was the demise of the clapper? Change in the technology for light bulbs. Now we've got Alexa and Siri to do that and to say, hey, Siri, turn the lights on. I get a kick out of talking to my mom and dad. They have Alexa, too. And uh, if I get a chance, I'll say, Alexa, set an alarm for 3 a.m. The bad thing is my Alexa hears it on my end, and I've set an alarm for 3 a.m., too. <laughs> Technology has certainly changed our lives through the years, has it not? And sometimes for the good, sometimes maybe it's going to be challenging for us and to think about adjusting our lives in other kinds of ways. My grandmother used to call the remote control the clicky hickey. <laughs> forever and a day at our house, it is forever the clicky hickey. And we've got lots of clicky hickeys. And you've seen on social media, media too, before the clicky hickey, who was the remote control? The kids were. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't hear that, Susan said, thank goodness for remote controls, so I don't have to have kids. <laughs> but if you think about it, we'll do just about anything from having to get up and take a few extra steps. It's a pet peeve of mine, and I don't like to put out and broadcast mine and Alberto's relationship, uh, but he goes to bed before I do. And inevitably, when he could have walked right by something whether it's close the window, turn the light off, or bring me some water or whatever, it's, would you do this? And I'm thinking, you get up and do it. You know, why did you just walk by there? We'll do anything, won't we, to do that? I'm, I'm guilty of that, too, I admit sometimes. How many of you, and you don't have to even raise your hand for this, how many of you are counting your steps? Is it going okay? Is it? Okay. So as we count steps, these folks, the scripture tells us that these two disciples, one named Clopas, the other unnamed, walked about seven miles. How many steps would you have to make to get to seven miles? Do you know? Well, you're close. About 15,000 to get there. Thinking about that this morning, now I'm 14 miles from my house to here. If I had to walk to church this morning, and some of you couldn't have made it because you'd have to come across water and tunnels and everything else, if that one, my goodness, can imagine that. How many of us would make that effort? Some of you are old enough to remember that old commercial, and I debated telling this because there's a whole lot of us in this room that don't remember this commercial, but you can find it on YouTube or TV land. I'd walk a mile for. Thank you for admitting who you, how old you are. <laughs> So it's about, to downtown Norfolk, it's about a little over seven miles, I think, from here. So that's about the distance out of Jerusalem that they were walking that day. As we think about what happened to them, what had happened in that week prior to, and this is the same day. Now, last week we talked about Thomas. We talked about the other disciples that were locked away in fear. And last week we talked about Thomas wasn't there. We don't know why Thomas was not there. Who knows? And in some ways I think Thomas got a bad rap because we've labeled him Doubting Thomas when he asked basically for the same evidence that the other folks had already seen. He wasn't asking for anything any differently. And so I think about these two. What do we know about these two in their walk that applies to my life and your life today and how we sort of hold in both hands trying to get out of walking, but at the same time knowing we need to get up and do what as best we can. And, and when we get to a point in our lives, and I don't want to use ableist language, but when we get to the point in our lives that we're not able physically to do something we still, boy, we realize how blessed and privileged we've been up to that point. And let's be aware of that with each other. So for whatever reason, they were on their way. And I like the image from Scripture that God works on the way. Sometimes we feel like we have to do this, that, or the other, or be this, that, or the other before we can recognize God's love and celebrate God's love. But I think along the way that God finds us, God shows up as he, God did with these two, unsuspecting. How many times in my life and yours have we realized later that God was at work all around us? But it's hard to feel it in the moment. And, you know, I don't 
blame any of us for that because we can all, I don't care how long you've been a believer, I don't care how long that or how strong you feel like your spiritual walk is, we can all find ourselves in that place. And the beauty of God's love is that God still surrounds us, and you know what I'm going to say, behind us, beside of us, and ahead of us in this journey. And it's not that you don't step in it. What is it? What's the next line? It's how you step out of it that counts. So in all of that, I invite you to think about how on the way in your lives to this point that God has met you. And maybe, you know, they're, as they're going, you know, they, they don't know the good news at this point. And so they're wondering what's going to happen as they go along the way. Let's think back in this passage to all the symbolism that we have. Remember, they've left the folks that are locked in fear. Fear can do crazy things to us. And I even hesitate to go there, but is that the driving motivation? Not an excuse, not a defense, and not a reason for the violence that we've been seeing across this land for somebody just walking into somebody's yard, a little girl and her dad in Gastonia and others showing up in the wrong door or getting in the wrong car. Sometimes I'm just praying for somebody to get in my car. <laughs> I'll just leave that right there. <laughs> so fear doesn't, and so with these two, let's not make the mistake that we made with Thomas to mislabel them. Because I've preached this sermon, I don't know how many times, or from this passage, and sometimes I thought they were fleeing. They were going to get as far away. And sometimes that's how we are in life. When something traumatic happens, we just want to go. We want to put some distance between us and what it, whether that's physical distance or emotional distance or intellectual distance. Uh-uh. Let me, I, I'm not going to deal with it. And sometimes that's a survival, it's a protection mechanism, isn't it, that we do this? So is it fight, flight, run and hide, or hide and seek? That's a whole other game. That may be a whole other sermon for another day. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we've all come from different ecumenical and denominational church backgrounds or no church background at all. We come in, in metropolitan community churches from all of that, and that's one of the beautiful things about us walking this journey together. I don't know if any of you came from the Latter-day Saints or the Mormon tradition, but I found something that one of their theologians wrote, uh, an article similar to this, and it made a lot of sense to me. It says, the fight, flight, or freeze response is what we call a protection response. We're protecting ourselves and our well-being. Protecting responses and behaviors are vital to our physical survivor, survival when we're in dangerous situations. However, in relationships, protecting responses can look like arguing or withdrawing from our loved ones. For example, if we approach our spouse or children to prove we're right, step on my toes a little bit, to hurl accusations or to name call, or if we withdraw from them, we're in protection mode. These responses often result in everyone feeling fearful, worried, judgmental, angry, defensive, contemptuous, stressed, or anxious. The better reaction when we're not in danger is called, and what they've called, a connecting response. And underlined in that was in capital letters, L-O-V-E. You know, Jen and Megan, you know, they're not only all lovey-dovey together, but what was that church you said you had? Don't even go there. Uh, but th when they go out traveling, they're looking for all the love signs. Are we looking for the love signs in our relationships? And I'm not just talking about you romantic, exciting, erotic, exotic kind of stuff, X-rated stuff that I know you don't want me to talk about. But I'm talking about in our everyday relationships with each other, with our families that are hard to love, and maybe they're hard to love us. Are we willing to find that connecting response in a way that allows us to see the person, not necessarily the problem. One of the Mormon presidents said this, never let a problem to be solved become more important than a person to be loved. Right. I like that. I don't care what denomination you came from. That'll preach. Sometimes maybe we find ourselves in that. Now, in this whole fight or flight kind of thing, and, and we're all... I won't say guilty of it. That sounds like I'm pointing fingers. But we all find ourselves there at times, don't we? Sometimes we just want to play dead and play possum. 
You remember the, me telling the story about the possum that our dog Yellow Lab Nico saw on the fence. And I said, oh, girl, you better leave that possum alone because that possum's got teeth. I think about Blue the bear in the Jungle Book. You know, he got a hold of the tail of the tiger and said, help, help, somebody help me. And they said, turn loose the tail. And he said, no, the other end's got teeth. Sometimes life has teeth too, does it not? Now, a few days after that possum was on the fence, I saw something in the backyard. Nika wasn't paying any attention to it, and it was, I walked out, and it was, I don't know if it was the same possum, but it was a possum. And I thought, oh, possum, are you possuming? And I got to shovel, because I know that possum got teeth if he's not dead. I poked him a little bit. He just laid there. I came back an hour or two later. He's still laying there. I thought, oh, he's dead. So I buried him. <laughs> this was before Easter. I went back after Easter to make sure that that possum hadn't, you know, I hadn't buried him alive and he didn't get, he's still buried, just so you know. So we can play possum or we can choose, even when we feel like we're vindicated to fight or to flee, to do so in a loving way. And I think about the examples from Scripture when the, the contention and the the combativeness between David and, and when Saul was still king and they were going back and forth and David could have killed Saul. And you know what David did? David snuck in and cut a piece of his robe off. That close. But chose to connect rather than to kill. Elijah after all the most powerful prophet and I think in the Old Testament is you know, he's called hell fire from heaven to take care of all this stuff and combat all the idols and everything else that's going on. And then the queen's upset and there he's being chased. And so he decides to run and he finds himself depressed on the floor of the cave. How many times do we find ourselves depressed on the floor of the cave? You've heard me preach this many times. None of us are immune from that. And then the still small voice of God saying, Elijah, why are you here? Get up. Go to the mouth of the cave. And it wasn't in the thunder and lightning and the wind. It was in the still, small whisper of voice that God was there. And Elijah says, I'm the, I'm the only one. And God said, no, i got lots of other sheep over here. I like that image from Scripture, other sheep. Sometimes we need to realize there's other sheep. I think about Nancy Wilson saying to Jerry Falwell, Dr. Falwell, I hope that I die before you because I want to be in heaven to welcome you. And we know that didn't happen that way. But sometimes we're considered the other sheep. The point is there's lots of room in God's pasture for all of us. And then God tells Elijah to get up and go back the way you came. That's hard to do. It's hard for us to go back and face some of the fears. And yet these folks, these two disciples, Clopas and, and this unnamed disciple, in their conversation with Jesus, when Jesus shows up and they don't know who Jesus is, they make the decision to do a U-turn and go back. Back the way they came to a place where people were still locked away in fear. What was it? that caused them to make that decision. They didn't recognize Jesus whenever. How many times have we, you know, embarrassed ourselves when we didn't recognize somebody? And I've quit saying to somebody we haven't met before because I've been proven wrong a whole lot of times. And somebody said, oh, yeah, we did this. And I'm thinking, all right, I just, good to see you again or whatever in that point. They didn't recognize Jesus, but Jesus shows up. And Jesus doesn't just show up. And throw up, but challenges them. And they say, are, are you crazy? Maybe Jesus comes up and they're, they're talking. Now, how many times have you tried to insert yourself into a conversation? Or you've had somebody come up and try to insert themselves into your conversation? We get a little bit ticked off about that, don't we? Or a little bit of standoffish about it. But Jesus is walking along with them and says, and what was it we were talking about? And they said, man, are you crazy? Are you the only person that's never heard, hasn't heard what's happened you know, and they, they start bringing out all this stuff. The interesting thing is you see Jesus', Jesus interaction. And Caroline Lewis, who's a Lutheran theologian, points this out, that Jesus doesn't just show up and throw up. Jesus interacts with them in a way that gets them to name their fear, gets them to face the fear. And then at the end of the day when they're 
Jesus is going to keep going on. It's, oh, no, come on. How many times have we met somebody and it's like, oh, wow, I just really connect with this person. For whatever reason, they were feeling that connection with Jesus as they walked. And sometimes there's not a reason for it. Sometimes we just feel it. You ever been there? And you just know, and it's like you've known the person. And so Jesus is going to go on. They say, no, no, come on and eat with us. It's safe to just go eat. Always safe to go eat, right? What is it, the nasty, dirty buffalo we're going to after a while? <laughs> and in the middle of all that, something clicks. As Jesus breaks the bread, and they hear his voice, and they look in his face, they didn't even ask to see the scars of his hands or at his side, and then in an instant, Jesus is gone. Jesus is gone. They had a pivotal moment to turn around and go back. What are those points in our lives to this point in that journey where we've had that kind of, of decision to make? Even if it meant going back the way that we came to face something that we needed to, or we find ourselves now that, you know, oh, wow. And are we open to that? Are we open to seeing and hearing Jesus when we don't expect Jesus to show up? And I, my, my money is on Jesus shows up in ways that we least expect more often than we think. More often than we think. And when we get back to the place that they're going, are we going to still buy in to all of the anxiety and the fear that's there? Or can we keep going? to see where we need to go and keep listening for Jesus' voice in our lives to say, you know, let's name this. Let's just don't lock ourselves away. Let's, you know, I don't, you don't have to have all the answers right now. I think that's an important part of our faith experience is sometimes you and I are so determined that we have to have all the answers. And I'm going to fess up. I can be that way too. I sometimes want the five-year plan. And I want to see that it's happened. And if it doesn't happen that way, well, I knew that was going to happen. How many times we get cynical and jaded rather than staying positive and keeping our eye on the ball, on the main thing, the main thing, and realize that God is still God. And even if everything doesn't go okay, God still loves me. And God still loves you, and there's meaning and reason to life. And somehow in the midst of all this craziness of the world, we can find a reason to say, God, thank you for love. Even to the point when we're laughing through our tears. To be able to share those moments. There's a passage of Scripture that I think is important for us in these moments. In 2 Timothy, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. What is not, you know, I grew up in a tradition where on Wednesday nights we'd have prayer meetings. And after prayer meeting, and it was a short prayer session usually, and well, it might be a Bible verse, somebody to do a little short devotion, and then it was testimony time. Some of you heard me say this before. Our neighbor, Mr. Robert, he's an elderly man, and he had to be the first one up at testimony time. And if you beat him up, I don't mean beat him up physically, but if you got ahead of him and jumped up before he did, he wouldn't speak to you for two weeks. <laughs> And he would say the same thing every week. He'd stand up and say, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me 30-some years ago. And of course, that clock kept going. The next year, it was 31 years. You could go back. If he was alive today, it'd be however many years since the Lord saved. And I told Mama, and I'm a kid at that point, I said, next time he says that, I'm going to say, but what's Jesus done since then? And what have you done since then? Mom said, you will not. I knew better than to go against my mama. But the question really is there for me and for you. Jesus shows up. Jesus challenges us to face the fears even in the midst of our doubts. But the question isn't worried about all that. The question is, 
What are we doing in our partnership to walk with Jesus? We want Jesus to walk with us, but are we wanting, and I'm not talking about getting down on your knees and fessing this and fessing that and being some sweet, syrupy, spiritual person. Sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes that just makes me sick. Because sometimes we can get so focused on that that we forget the reason for us to be connected to spirituality. Even when we're like Elijah and we're not feeling it, we're on the floor of the cave. And sometimes God speaks in those still small voices. Other times God gives us a good kick in the pants once in a while too, I think. Let's not let our reaction, let's be proactive rather than reactive to God's love. And realizing that God wants to walk hand in hand with us in this journey, even when we're not very lovable, even when we want to be locked away and not only lock ourselves away but lock Jesus away, God's still holding us as we hold each other. Can I hear amen? amen. The Lord is with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O oh Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory in unending praise as we praise together saying... Gracious and merciful God, our Creator, a Creator that has created the universe and the world around us and us in it and in partnership with You, a Savior who helps us to understand just how much that You have loved us and still love us and will keep on loving us, and a Holy Spirit that burns in our hearts and minds to the depth of our soul, even when we don't understand it or have all the answers even when we have to just simply be in the moment, whether it's on the floor of the cave or somewhere else, or shouting praises to the mountaintop, you are our God in there, and more often perhaps than not in the middle of all that somewhere we find ourselves. We come to this holy table of community and of thanksgiving, and we come to receive your love, to give your love, and to live life as you have called us, not only in the moment, but to more fully in the whole. And all God's people said, Amen. Jesus had gathered with those disciples around the Passover table. He took the bread and blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body. This is my body opened to you. As often as you receive it, you receive me. And it's not just for a few, but it is for you and you and you and you and you. And you. And you, and you. Imagine me not saying that to you, but imagine hearing that still small voice of God, or maybe God shouting in the other ear or both ears at the same time. It's for you. Hear your name there. Would you say it with me? It's for me. In the same way, he took the cup and he poured the cup and he blessed it and he said, This is the new covenant. It's grace, it's mercy, it's forgiveness, all wrapped up into one. And it's not conditional. That is already there. All you have to do is receive it and recognize and forgive yourself and forgive others as you come to this table of grace and mercy and compassion and community and thanksgiving. It's that simple. Say it again. It's for me. You don't sound convinced. Let me hear you say it like you just discovered toys on Christmas morning. It's for me. Maybe that's a little too much. That's the beauty, isn't it? It's never too much for the kingdom of God. Never too soft, never too loud. God hears us all, even when we don't believe or feel that God is. Would you look to somebody beside of you and gently at first point out one or two, don't point your finger, but say, it's for you too. <laughs> now get a little more excited and look to two or three other people. Now look to the same people and say, it's for you too. It's for you too. <laughs> now if you get too excited to do that, people are going to start backing up. <laughs> the beauty is, it is for all of us. It's for all y'all and mama and them and however we want to say it. 
And that I don't know about you, but that sparks joy in my soul. And God's Spirit burns in our soul even when we can't recognize that God is there. Today we proclaim the great miracle and mystery of our faith. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, and Christ shall come in. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, children of God, all of you, I invite you to this table of grace, community, and love, and thanksgiving today. It makes no difference whether you're a member of this church or of any other church. No church at all. It doesn't make any difference. It's about celebrating God's love for you, that connecting spirit that connects us to God and to each other in this moment. If you didn't receive one of the individual communion packages, if you'll raise your hand, Jennifer can bring you one today. If you're at home today, go and get a cookie or a cracker, a cup of juice, a cup of wine. doesn't make any difference what, or if you're joining us later in the week, because God's Spirit is still at work in the miracle and mystery of life to connect us all together. The choir is going to sing, and then we'll share together as the body of Christ. May we share together the body of Christ. Cup of grace and mercy and salvation. May we share together. I invite you to rise as you're able and as you feel comfortable as we sing the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Forgive us. 
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hear these words of Scripture. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. And you will find rest for your souls. Our closing song today, our benediction in just a moment is... Going up where? The King's Highway, which begins wherever I believe the presence of Christ is. And we believe and share that presence right now. Go in the grace and mercy and peace of Almighty God. God bless you, my friends, and thank you for being here today. It's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there. But the pure in heart, it's a highway to heaven, and I'm walking on the King's Highway. My wig is brighter, my look is lighter, walking on the King's Highway. There's a joy in knowing, with him I'm going, walking on the King's Highway. It's a highway. Walking up the King's Highway. Yes, it is. It's a highway to heaven. None can walk there, but the pure. But the pure at heart. It's, it's a highway to heaven. And I'm walking up the King's Highway. If you're not walking, start while I'm talking. Walking up the King's Highway. Possessing, walking up the king's highway.